Welcome back. I'm Krista from Plant Lux, and today I would like to talk to you about creating a plant therapy room or a corner of your home that you can call plant therapy. So I'd like to call it the plant spa. So that's what we're going to do today. That's the agenda. I'm here for you every Monday and Thursday. And if you are new here, we talk about plants, plant therapy, plant healing, plant care, plant styling, and all things plants. So let's get right into it and get our plant spa on. Let's take a look around and see what we've got here uh, to make it all come together. So first things first, let's talk about the use of candles. Candles are very soothing, okay? So you're gonna wanna have some kind of candle. If you don't like candles that are actual candles that, that burn, uh, you can get these little jobbies here. These are called luminaire candles. I believe they have a couple couple different varieties. You can pick these up at you know, Bed Bath & Beyond, TJ Maxx, Walmart, any store really, Home Goods has candles like this. Uh, usually re they require some uh, double, I think these are C batteries actually, C or D batteries. So um, the price for these is generally between uh, 15 to $20 I think. You probably could get them a singular or in a double pack. So that's you know, the candle option. The other option would be obviously, um, you know, your, your regular candle, a real candle. You can have all different kinds, shapes and sizes. I recommend a variety of different shapes and sizes. You can usually pick these up at a dollar store. Very easy, um, scented or unscented. I, I prefer the scented ones because it adds that special spa effect to the room. So that's what I have in here. I have a mixture of uh, real candles and also um, fake candles. Obviously, uh, advice would be, yeah, you know, have to make sure that where you're placing your candles, you're not placing them in a spot where your plant could catch fire or other nearby things could catch fire. Um, so be very aware of that. Now, as far as plants, uh, are concerned, I like to have a variety of um, plants for a certain feel, uh, lots of different shapes and sizes, textures, um, lots of hanging plants. Um, we've made sort of a plant wall over here. Some of you might wonder, well, what kind of plants would you put in a, or what kind of plants would I recommend that you put in a um, plant therapy room? Let's say, for example, if you don't have any plants or maybe you're new to plants. Um, I'm going to recommend a few for you if um, this is your first time here or if you're new. Let's talk about some plants that you could put in your plant spa therapy corner or room. So I would always recommend a, uh, a pothos of some kind. This is a um, reverting uh, queen marble pothos. So you could, any pothos works. These are really easy care plants and um, generally you can find one that's vining somewhere. So I highly recommend any variety of pothos. There are several varieties. Golden pothos is generally the most common one that you can find in your local hardware store. So I would recommend one of these to pick up. Another one that I see around a lot, at least in my area, is um, a lickety split philodendron. This adds a lot of texture and height and generally they come pretty large. So I would recommend any variety of large philodendron to pick one of these up. I also would recommend one of these philodendron, a Brazil philodendron. These generally you can find, they're pretty common to find, and they're very easy care plants, as is the philodendron uh, lickety split. And this um, variety of philodendron is very easy care. So you want easy care because the point is stress-free, or to reduce stress. So this would be a good choice of plant to have as well as the lickety split. This is a neon philodendron. Same thing, very easy care plant. Um, other ones I would recommend that are very easy care if you're new to plants. Um, this is a Scandapsis pictus, very easy care. Um, I actually picked mine up on Amazon and it did come very leggy. So this is very affordable, very um, easy, and the company, I will link it in the description below where I got mine. Let's see. This is a variety, this is a variety of philodendron, a little harder to find though, but any variety of philodendron, any variety. 
This is a golden pothos, so any variety of pothos. I know that this looks different than the other pothos I showed you, but this is an easy care plant, very um, easy to pick up. Usually you can find these anywhere. Um, a syngonium will get long and leggy. Syngoniums are easy to find. Generally speaking, I don't see them coming this large. This is a combination of a plant. Um, I think there's three in here and they were like the little plugs that you buy. So this was a combination of three plugs. It's very affordable. I think they're like $4 each. Just put them all in one big pot, pot it up, and you have a large syngonium. And this will get very long and, and leggy too and bushy. Um, this is a Mykins philodendron, a little harder to find, but beautiful and gorgeous. And this will get long and leggy as well. Lots of velvety texture really fun plant to have a lot of easy care. Um, if you can find any variety of Hoya anywhere, I highly recommend this for a spa room. This is a, um, a Hoya Publicalis Splash, and this is a Hoya Rubra. So if you can find these, great. Sometimes they have them. It just depends, but these are easy care plants. They don't require a ton of watering. Um, so um, just to kind of re recap here, um, you know, any variety of philodendrons. This is a green philodendron, Brazil, Brazil, a Hoya, a Brazil, and another Scindapsis over here. If you can find a Monstera Addisonii, they're great. They're not easy care plant though, really but they are great. Uh, they really add elements of texture. Um, if you could look over here really quick and check out the texture that that adds to that corner. So, now if you're interested in getting something like this, a chain of hearts, it's very romantic, very um, perfect for a spa retreat feel. Uh, definitely recommend it. Um, I think it's easy care. Um, you don't really have to water them very often, um, but you do not need to make, you do need to make sure that they are near a window. They need sun, so, but yeah. Um, Hoya, again, you can pick these up generally at any, depending on the time of the year. I'm pretty sure I got this one at Lowe's, so you can find them. Anyway. Uh, lots of different variety, lots of long leggy plants, but also some other um, shapes down here uh, to sort of finish out the look. We also have some little, um, you know, elements to add a sort of feel. So there is um, like some little birds here. We've got crate. We've got a lantern and uh, some other um, structures. Uh, this was an antique picked up at a, a local antique shop. I think it's like an old garden plant stand or something. Um, really not expensive. I didn't take the time to antique this. This is how it came. It was just rusted. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we have candlesticks. Looks like my candle stopped burning. It's for height. And you've got obviously all kinds of different plants. We have a syngonium back here and then we've got a theme going here. So we've got this long bench as you can see. This is just a piece of wood and th this is um, a, a cinder block. So there's two cinder blocks and a piece of wood and that is what's created this level in the room. And underneath the cinder blocks, there are some felt pads to protect the wood floor because cinder blocks are very abrasive. So that's what is protecting the floor. Um, we've got a variety of different plants going on here, but a common theme, as you can see, are terracotta pots. But then we have some other things like candles and birds and some other um, different pots to add some character. 
you know, it's really an eclectic mix. So I would say whatever you have around the house, um, you know, bring it all together in a grouping and then have a common theme like terracotta or, you know, if you have all white pots, then, you know, just space them out. So this creates a very aesthetic look. You get lots of positive energy from the plants. It has a very soothing feel to it. Um, we have the, the white curtains, which really aren't a big part of this um, aesthetic, but um, they do add a sort of a backdrop and that ties in with over here with the whites that we have popping color over here on um, this sofa-like bed. Okay. So lots of different variety with height common theme with color, with the different terracotta and texture. You've got a candlestick theme going, different kinds of candlesticks, they don't all have to match. You have a few plant stands for variety. Here's a plant stand over here. Another terracotta pot here. obviously you know if you wanted to dress up the window you could put a, a couple plant hangers up there if you wanted to uh, we chose not to do that um, to just hang these pretty um, chain of hearts here and flank the window that way um, okay so over here I have a seating arrangement you know if I want to come in after a long hard day and have a seat I have some chocolates here and this little cubby here, little chocolates and you know, your favorite drink like so, lantern, very peaceful, you can sit, relax, take it in, the, the lighting is soothing, the smell is soothing and you've got your, um, your plant aesthetic going on. This is a room that just calls out and says calming, serenity, and you can just relax and let the plants do the work for you. As you know, plants are in perfect harmony with nature, so it's always positive energy and positive vibrations from the plants. So they'll do the work, they'll de-stress, I promise, they will do it. All you have to do is put a lot of them in a room. Make sure you have a humidifier if you could pan over here real quick. I do have a humidifier going in the back to keep the plants happy and to keep the humidity up. And then I have a collection of different antique little bottles that I picked up at like a Salvation Army or a Goodwill. And that's where I'm, all my propagations are gonna be hanging out. And then, you know, if I chose to come on over here, and relax, maybe take a nap. This is where I would hang out and just chill and relax. Notice that we have a lot of different textures. We've got, um, we've made this into sort of a day, this day bed into a, like a sofa feel, so it's more like flexible. We've got our backdrop of our white satin pillows, and then some texture, other, some other texture pillows for a nice backdrop, and then a velour blanket. You know, you want things that feel nice to the touch, so velour would be good. And then, you know, you just kind of chillax. And this is your little corner. Have your drink, have your chocolates, and you just kind of chill. Also, uh, one other thing I want to say is I would have some elements of either mirrors or artwork. I chose to put this mirror as a backdrop. There were a couple of other choices, but as you know, if you're having, if you have a small space, um, mirrors make it look larger. So that would be something to consider. Um, another thing to consider would be um, using uh, vases, vase, vase, however you want to say. It. Um, so like things like this for a pop of color, or to add some texture or other elements of. Um, interest for your space. Plant stands are always key. Um, you want to vary height, as I said earlier, so you're going to want to make sure that you have a variety of different uh, plant stands, so that way you can layer your plants. So let's 
let's talk about layering for just a second, if you will. So as you can see over here in this corner, how I've layered these plants is I have a hanging one. It's a certain height. I would say it's two feet off the ground. I've got this as my floor um, piece with the basket, so it's not on a stand at all. And then I have this on a stand, this little stool right here. So this one's about three feet off the ground. So about three feet, no feet off the ground, but larger piece. We've got this small bird's nest fern that is obviously not on any plant stand. So you notice the variation of height. That's the determining factor in your scape. So when you're scaping out your room, you wanna make sure that you, when you're layering plants, that you're providing some um, eye appeal, some visual interest. So that's what we've done here. And then over here, if you take a look, the same kind of idea, really. So you have, you know, your plant stand here. It's up off the ground, maybe about six inches or eight inches or so. And then you've got this one that's on the floor. And then you've got this one that's on a barrel. This piece right here. And then you've got this in a, in a white pot. So you've got the theme of white pot with your um, bright colored neon philodendron, aglionema, and you've got your white pot. And you've got a, obviously a darker barrel and then you know your darker pot with some texture here. And notice tall, medium, uh, low, <laughs> small. So you, you can kind of see how visually it, it kind of does a uh, sideways triangle, okay? And then if you look over here, it kind of does the same kind of thing with layering. It kind of goes out in a sideways triangle. So it's something to consider when you're layering plants. And over here, this looks like an inverted triangle. Okay, can, you can kind of see the, the shape if you take a step back and draw a pretend triangle. Um, anyway, something to think about. And then over here, we've made a wall. So there's, there's really um, a different thing going on with heights. The layers are quite a bit different. But if you look at how it's constructed, you can still kind of see the variations of heights of the plants how some of them are on the ground, some of them are on plant stands, and then some of them are hanging out on a shelf of some kind. So to, to recap, um, you know, you're gonna wanna, if when you're making a plant therapy room, you're gonna want to think all things that make for a stress-free, relaxing time. Uh, you wanna think candles, you wanna think colors, um, you want these to be soothing colors. I've picked like off-white and a taupe color, um, whites, and um, for the pots, some of the terracotta pots. Um, obviously, lots of greenery. As many plants as you can get into the room, I say the more the barrier. Just make sure you're varying them in height and the way that you're arranging them. So that way it's not just looking like a bunch of plants on the floor, okay? So, um, one easy way to do that was the bench that I showed you with the cinder blocks and the piece of wood. That's very easy, quick, uh, to, takes literally a minute to make because you just pick up the piece of wood at Lowe's. You don't even have to cut it, or if you want to cut it, they'll cut it for you. Um, and then have cinder blocks. You can also make bookshelves out of those. Uh, now, if you don't really like the aesthetic of that, and you'd like something a little bit more fancy, uh, you could get creative with some other types of bricks there that are more finished looking. Uh, they have landscaping materials there, the landscaping bricks. Um, if you don't like that aesthetic, there are some options with shelving. Or if you hop to an antique store or something like that, you can usually pick up uh, church pews or other benches or, you know, antique, uh, you know, picnic benches and stuff. There's all kinds of different choices. But basically what you want is something low to the floor and long and narrow. That's what we did here. So the pots you can pick up at a Home Goods, TJ Maxx, Pier One, you know, any of those sorts of stores. Michaels even might have some things in there. Uh, but again, uh, you know, 
you're gonna want to focus on elements that create height when you're layering plants. We, we talked about candlesticks. We talked about some plant stands. We talked about creative ways to use things in your home as plant stands, like a stool, for example, that I showed you. Um, we also used a barrel and I used a cinder block over here. <laughs> I ran out of plant stands. Uh, we also talked about using candlesticks to vary. Um, some, of, some of my plants are on candlesticks. If you wanna take a look over here real quick. So this is a candlestick and we have a pot and a plant on this one. And we also have a potted plant on this candlestick as well. So you can use candlesticks to vary the heights of your plants on your, your um, spa bench is what we're gonna call it. So those are my thoughts and ideas on creating a spa plant therapy room. Make sure that you know you're chilling, you're feeling good, you know, when you're in, in your space, the object is to have the plants do the work, okay? You provide the plants, and I think that uh, the ambiance of the candles and maybe some light, soft music playing in the background, um, you've got your lighting, you've got your smell, if you want, you know, your diffuser going with some scents in the air. Uh, make sure that you have a humidifier because the plants will love it and it'll keep the plants happy and that's good. So, yeah, neutral colors are always a plus. Don't go bold unless that's what makes you happy, I suppose. All right, well, that's it. That's me signing off and I hope that you like my ideas on, on this little uh, plant retreat, this plant therapy room, and get your favorite drink, turn the lights down, have yourself some chocolate, you're going to be all set. You're going to be stress-free in no time at all. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you like my ideas on a plant therapy room. Uh, again, make sure you find a corner or a spot that you can call your own, and that is where you're going to do your unwinding and your plant therapy, let the plants do the work for you. I'm here for you every Monday and Thursday, and I really appreciate you coming out and joining me today and watching my videos. Please come back and see me again real soon. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up, and um, thanks again for your support. Really appreciate it. Bye.